me, Mr. Ray, back with uh, story time for another day and the next chapter of uh, Don Quixote. Right, let's see what our pretend knight is up to today. Chapter 3 Treacherous Windmills. Don't go away again, begged his niece when he got home. You're ill, believing you're a knight. It's ridiculous. Let me get back to my books, urged Don Quixote. They're not ridiculous. But it was too late. While he'd been away, his housekeeper had made a huge bonfire and burned them all. The priest and the barber had walled up the library door so he couldn't even find his empty shelves. Furiously, he felt over the place where the door used to be. At last, worn out with raving, he went to bed. The following morning, he crept out secretly to sell some land to pay for his next adventure. On the way back, he met Sancho Panza, a farmer who lived nearby. You can't miss the opportunity of being my squire, said Don Quixote in his most persuasive voice. Just think what glittering prizes you might win with me. Money, treasure, land. If I conquer an island, which could easily happen, I'll make you governor. Oh, gulped Sancho Panza. He grinned. We'll set off this very night, decided Don Quixote. Don't forget saddlebags and don't tell a soul. That evening, Sancho Panza with the bags and a leather bottle strapped to his donkey, rode proudly next to Don Quixote. Crossing a huge plain, they espied thirty or forty windmills in the distance. Look, shouted Don Quixote, over there, thirty or more terrible giants who I will fight and kill. Giants? Where? asked Sancho Panza. Over there, pointed Don Quixote, with the long arms. These giants have arms almost six miles long. Those aren't giants, Sancho retorted. They're windmills. What you think are arms are in fact their sails. When the wind turns them, they turn millstones. <coughs> you don't know anything about adventures, replied Don Quixote. They're giants, and if you're frightened, you can hide and say your prayers while I fight them. He sank his spurs into Rocinante and charged at them top speed, calling as he galloped, Help me, sweet Dulcinea! Flee not, you evil creatures, he cried. Only one brave knight attacks you. A gust of wind arose and the sails began to move. Don Quixote shrieked. But you have more arms than any giant should have, and I will make you pay for that. He thrust his lance into a sail, but the wind turned the sail so fast it smashed the lance to smithereens, dragging the horse and his rider along with it. Don Quixote went rolling over the plain with yelps of pain. Sancho Panza prodded his donkey and rushed to help. Didn't I tell you to be careful? Didn't I say there were windmills? You don't understand, Don Quixote replied, struggling back onto his horse. An evil enchanter has just turned all these giants into windmills to deprive me of my glorious victory. <coughs> and now you're riding all lopsided, Sancho observed. Now I know, Don Quixote, wincing, tried to sit straighter. But do I moan? Never. Knights aren't allowed to grumble, no matter how severe their wounds. I'm glad I'm only a squire, not a knight, said Sancho, swigging a drink from his leather bottle. I'm going to moan like anything if I get hurt. Don Quixote wasn't listening. He tore off a dead branch from an, old oak, from an oak tree. This will be my new lance, he cried, fixing on the iron head from the broken one. We'll spend the night under these trees and see what happens tomorrow. All right, and we'll catch up with them tomorrow as well. So uh, have a great day, everybody, and uh, take care. Bye-bye.